Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to our uh, Maximum Acceleration series. We are doing a, um, a series of webinars that uh, we have planned on, on uh, we're planning on doing them indefinitely. And so this is a place where you can come every week uh, to get some really good coaching ideas. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, referrals. We know that, uh, especially with rates so low, that uh, our business is inundated with, with uh, refinance business. And just as history has proven, the, the refinances eventually dry up a little bit, and uh, we have to rely mostly on our purchase business. And so today with us to talk about that and to give you some great insight around purchase strategies, uh, we have Mr. Eric Chinesco. And <clears throat> Eric's marketing director actually sent me a bio um, about Eric, uh, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I know about him. Uh, he's a, a great friend of mine. By the way, my name is Earl McLean. I am one of the Maximum Acceleration Coaches. And um, Eric and I have been friends for quite some time now. And some of the things that I know about Eric are that he got involved in the mortgage industry back in 1996, which has been, what, that 15, 16 years? And he started as a junior loan officer. And in 98, he actually went out on his own, and he started building offices. Um, he put together... Uh, three offices in three different territories. In the last 12 months that he was running that office, um, Eric personally closed 236 loans in that last 12-month period. What's impressive is that 90% of those loans were purchase transactions. He had two other loan officers working with him. They were each doing 10 loans a month. Um, Eric took a, 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 a brief time and went into the um, um, wholesale business for a while. And then in 2004, he was approached by Mr. Tim Burheem. We all know him uh, with Loan Toolbox. And Tim brought Eric on board to, so that he could help develop the business planning tool for Loan Toolbox. And that tool is still being used today, uh, which eventually led to Maximum Acceleration in 2005. <clears throat> Since the launch of Maximum Acceleration in 2005, Eric and his team have put over 2,500 people through that program. And they've had an average growth rate of 40% in six months. So they've done an, an amazing job with people's bottom line. Um, uh, Eric is here to talk to us a little bit about this, some of these referral strategies. And so with that, Eric, I'd like to uh, just go ahead and, and turn it over to you. How are you doing today? Welcome on the call. Well, thank you, Earl, for the introduction. Hey, uh, everybody, welcome to the call. Uh, by the way, as Earl mentioned, this is the first in a uh, every week at this time we're going to be getting together and just providing what we can share, what we're learning from our industry, and have an open discussion format. Uh, we've got a lot of great speakers coming up. You make sure that you kind of come back to the website on a regular basis and check out what the next couple of programs are going to be looking like. Uh, you know, our design here was to, to just be able to create an opportunity where we can kind of create a community and a community here uh, where we can all work together to help each other grow across the country. And that's kind of our approach is, is you know, this industry has been very good to us. Um, we've all enjoyed some, you know, significant success over the last couple of months. And, uh, you know, we're just going to try and, and, and keep the conversation going about what we need to do to stay ahead of the trend and continue to adapt and evolve to the changes that are uh, coming at us on, on a regular basis. So today's program is really, I wanted to focus in on this issue of balancing the surge of refinance volume and how crazy that business can get with the eventual need that we're going to have for purchase business. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, interest rates can't go to zero. There's not enough money in it for mortgage-backed security investors to buy in. And and you know, there's there's some indications that you know, I mean, we're we're you know, we're trading in all-time highs as far as pricing and rates and mortgage-backed securities. The market's not giving us the full leverage of what we we should be seeing on our rate sheets, and, and for two reasons. One is that lenders are managing capacity uh, by hedging. They're, they're not giving us the full benefit of the market. There's a gap um, that we're seeing. Secondly is, is that, you know, how much demand is there for, you know, if I were an investor who had a, you know, 10 or 20 or or $100,000 to invest and I wanted to put it someplace safe like mortgage-backed securities, do I really want to buy into a pool of mortgages that only has a two or a two and a half percent yield rate? It, it just doesn't seem to make much sense um, for rates to go much lower than they're going right now. And what that means is, 
eventually we will run out of steam. Everybody who could refinance probably already will have. And, and, and in the meantime, we all know that if we take our eye off the ball when it comes to maintaining those purchase relationships, there's a chance that, and I use the analogy of a wave, if you think about this, and I, I tried to find a good visual for today's program, but kind of failed miserably at that, so I'll apologize in advance. But just think about what happens when a big wave hits the shore. Immediately, there's an undertow that sucks it back out. And if you ever stood on the beach and, and let a you know, wave roll over your feet, feels like you're being sucked back out to sea. That's what you're feeling is that undertow. Uh, and, and in the most extreme environments, the current creates what's called a riptide, which is, you know, if you've ever, you know, taken a scuba diving class or, in, in a, you know, been on a, on a beach where riptides were present, uh, the lifeguards would tell you to stay out of it because it'll suck you out, you know, hundreds of yards in the, back into the ocean. And the best thing to do is just wait until it carries you out and then swim sideways across the current. Um, what I mean by that is, is, you know, think about how the dynamic of our business spent. When was the last time you had a, you know, an in-depth conversation with a financial planner, a CPA, or a realtor about purchase business and what's going on in the purchase side of the market? Or have you been so overwhelmed and crazy with the refinance business that it may have been weeks and maybe even months for some of you? And the problem with that is, is if we, we spend so much of our time, energy, or effort focusing on the refinance business and just trying to deal with the stuff that's falling out of the trees in our lap, this wave of huge opportunity, that there's a real temptation and tendency to, to you know, cash in or make hay while the sun's shining or whatever analogy you want to use for that. And what happens as a result is, is those relationships that, are critical to maintaining a flow of consistent referrals for purchase business go stale. Uh, you know, it, it's that whole out of sight, out of mind type concept that happens. And and if it's been months, what do you do about it? So today's program, I wanted to share with you some quick, tactical, and simple things that you can do in the middle of what you're doing on a daily basis to manage the demand of your customers and the business that's coming your way. Um, to be able to continue to refresh and maybe uh, even uh, sustain those relationships that are so critical to building purchase business. The other thing you got to remember is, is you know, so the market. Imagine you know, wake up um, you know, the day after the elections and the markets responded extremely favorable to the November elections and. Uh, the stock market's taken off like a rocket. The bond market's fallen in the toilet, and all of a sudden, interest rates are back in the five percent range again. What would your pipeline look like if interest rates jumped to 5% overnight, more or less? How long would it take to build your pipeline back in a purchase environment? Because the other thing we have to remember and understand about the difference between a refinance business and a purchase-driven business is the timeline, right? You know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, what's the sales cycle of introducing the idea of a refinance to a customer, getting them committed to doing it and moving forward. I mean, a week at most, right? I mean, you talk to them today, they think about it for a day, you, talk, you, you, know, you lock the rate tomorrow and you're off and running. You're getting a paycheck in 30 to 45 days on that loan. What about a purchase, though? I mean, you know, the realtor you talk to today that sends you a referral 30 to 60 days down the road that goes out and shops for another 30 to 60 days after that that goes into a live contract 120 to 180 days from now is a paycheck 200 and something, you know, seven, eight, nine months down the road. Now, it can happen a lot faster than that, obviously, but at, at the minimum, I mean, what's the shortest you would imagine between first contact and paycheck in a purchase situation? Even if you talk to a realtor today who has a new buyer ready to be referred immediately, you're still probably looking more like 60 to 90 days for an actual paycheck in your pocket. So a couple of the things that we want to look at is we want to kick up your refinance referral generation engine sooner and maintain and sustain those important and critical relationships. And, and it was kind of interesting. I was having a conversation with one of my personal clients earlier this morning, and we were talking about this whole issue of asking for referrals or not. Um, and one of the things that we talked about was, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's – um, you know, the best way to get a referral is give a referral. And so what we're going to be talking about, you guys are having a lot of activity in your business. You've got a lot of things going on. So what do we do 
to add just one a little bit, a bit of conversation to that process that helps you generate referrals for the people that you're going to have to depend on or work with as you move further down the pipe with the purchase volume and the refinances that are out of the system at that point. So one of the first things I want to introduce you to is this whole concept of mining. Now, I don't know if any of you guys have watched the show Gold Rush, popular show on Discovery Channel. Um, I caught my attention a couple of months ago, and I've watched now both seasons of it. Um, the, the cool thing I found out about this thing is, is you know, finding a lead, you know, somebody who can benefit from a loan is a lot like mining for gold. And if you think about that process, I mean, literally they're moving thousands of upon tens of thousands of tons of dirt. They take it down and put it in one of these wash plant things, and, and, it, and it filters out the heavier particles of the gold and washes away the dirt and the lighter rock particles and those kind of things. And then from there, you get down to these, you know, couple of ounces of gold that are literally worth you know, over $1,500 an ounce right now. But it makes, you know, the estimated is somewhere in the 15 to 20 tons to find one ounce of gold. So sometimes looking for referrals can be much the same process. We're looking for those people who have the greatest opportunity to benefit from what we have to educate and inform them about. So think about the opportunities that you have every day when you talk to customers. Think about it for just a second, and, and by the way, the slide you're seeing up in front of you right now is what we call the opportunity gain. This is an exercise we do in a lot of our live training programs. Uh, you know, it's basically, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put the, 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 you know, the people attending the Mastermind event, we'll put them together in a uh, groups of three to four at a table, and then we'll ask them to think of all of the different opportunities that are connected to any one potential client that we might be talking to. Now, most of those opportunities are not a new loan for that borrower. Most of those opportunities are actually referral opportunities. For example, the, the, the young couple that just uh, had their second child and they don't have a life insurance plan in place. They don't have anything to protect their kids in case they were taken out uh, unexpectedly. They don't have any uh, disability insurance or anything like that. Uh, they don't have a will or estate plan. They don't have savings. Uh, they don't have a financial planner. They're not building to save for their kids' college or retirement. Um, you know, a lot of people we meet often, particularly in the first-time homebuyer markets, are just living basically paycheck to paycheck. But what opportunity is created as a result of that? We spend just a little bit more time to educate our clients on how to be a little bit more fiscally responsible and maybe take $25 or $50 a month and, and set it up on an automatic installment deposit to a savings account so they could build a little bit of an emergency fund, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the, the unique thing about what we do in the mortgage world is we impact people at a time and we see the biggest, widest picture of what's going on in that family's financial life well beyond what any other financial professional sees. I mean, think about it. What do we see when we take a loan application? You know, we, we see their spending habits what their debt load is and how much of it's being used percentage of their income wise when we calculate DTIs. We see, uh, you know, we see whether they do or don't have savings. We see whether their, their debt is growing or shrinking. We see the stability of their income. We see their tax implications when we look at the tax returns. Are they overpaying or underpaying their taxes? Are there deductions that they could be taking better advantage of? And is their track strategy consistent with their mortgage strategy consistent with their financial plan or savings strategy. All of those things rolled up into one create an opportunity for us to not only be able to connect with that client at a deeper and more valuable level, but also to be able to identify needs that that customer has that we can introduce them to solutions for. So think about, you know, would any right you know, minded, you know, would anybody in their right mind, financial planner, CPA, insurance guy, if you called them up and said, you know, hey, Mr. Insurance Guy, I just want to spend 10 to 15 minutes with you about a potential referral that I have for you. Can I grab five minutes with you to see if you'd be a good fit for this customer? I mean, what financial professional in their right mind wouldn't at least take your phone call if you left them that type of a voicemail? So this creates this huge network of opportunity around you. So 
what we want to try and do is dig a little bit deeper into this concept of find a need. And that's what this key to this referral mining process is really all about. If you can find a need, you'll find a lead. Now, when it comes to mining for purchase referrals specifically, let's talk about the people who have the greatest opportunity to benefit from the market we're sitting in the middle of right now. I mean, you've heard speakers talk about, you know, the fact that, that you know, Moses couldn't have gotten a cheaper interest rate on a house right now than what the average buyer can. I mean, you'd have to go back to the middle of the dark ages to find anybody who offered home loans at a cheaper interest rate. What that means is home affordability is the best it has ever been in American real estate history, and we continue to break records month after month after month over the last 20 or so months. So think about the people who don't know that. Think about where their thinking may be off or misinformed. So there's some obvious ones that come to mind here. First of all, the renters. You know, think about what it costs. You know, what does $1,000 a month in rent get you in your market? You know, I, I live in central Missouri. We're kind of here in the Midwest, the Jefferson City, the capital of Missouri. For $1,000 a month in rent in our town, you're going to get a higher-end apartment complex or a rental unit in a condo. Usually it's going to be a nicer, probably 11 to 1,200 square foot, two bed, one and a half bath with a nice entertaining area style condo. For $1,000 a month in purchase price in our market, USDA, FHA, or VA loan, you're talking a nice, well-constructed, probably new home, 14 to 1,500 square foot, three bed, two bath, two car garage, likely with a finished base, unfinished basement on a couple acres. Purchase price in the 150 to 160 range for $1,000 a month, including property taxes and homeowner's insurance. So the point here is, how much more house could they buy for the same money? Because interest rates are in the mid-threes versus where they were four or five years ago. And maybe the last time that person looked into buying versus renting, they did, there wasn't quite that gap in affordability that there is now. You know, another group of, of people is to think about is people who've had significant changes to their family size or structure in the last couple of months or the last couple of years. You know, the family that bought a starter home five, six, seven years ago, and they're still living in that three-bed, two-bath starter home, even though they've had a couple extra kids or, uh, or an elderly parent has moved back in with them because of elder care needs. And that family has outgrown that home. Why haven't they upgraded? Why haven't they refinanced? I mean, think about it. You know, if you were a family that was in a home that was obviously too small for you, you hadn't, ref you won't refinance because it doesn't make sense. You know, you plan on moving out of that home eventually. Of course, we all know what eventually means, right? Never. <laughs> Beyond that, though, uh, you know, if if uh, you know, if you're if you're thinking about it and you're paying that, you know, twelve hundred dollar a month mortgage payment on a hundred and twenty thousand dollar house because you bought it five years ago when interest rates were at six percent, what are you not realizing? I mean, are you not aware of how much more purchase power you have with interest rates at roughly half what they were five years ago? I mean, you know, if you think about it from that perspective, you know, a 2% reduction on a $150,000 house, 4% versus 6%, that's $3,000 a year in interest costs the first couple of years of a 30-year loan, right? that's a little over $300 a month discount to the mortgage payment. So the $1,000 a month at 6% goes how much further when you're talking sub 4% money? Is it likely that people could upgrade their property $60,000, $100,000 with little or no increase to their current mortgage payment if they were to trade in, trade in their home for an upgrade model? You know, another one is relocations, um, and, and there's a couple of other areas that fall into this. But, you know, it, it, my whole point is here, I want to get your creative juices flowing about all the people who are out there who could benefit 
from doing something different with their housing situation, moving or upgrading or going from rental to purchasing. And we all know the benefits of, you know, I mean, think about it. You know, one of the biggest expenses of renting is the fact that you're throwing all your money away. You're 100% interest if you're renting, right? They're not building any principal at all, right? And $600 a month is $36,000 in five years, literally down to somebody else's toilet. And there's zero equity to show for it at the end of that five-year period, right? So all of these different issues or areas create opportunities. And, and opportunities for people who are probably totally unaware or very likely misinformed about how real that opportunity is for them. So that's the first key to this system, is recognizing and understanding where the needs and opportunities exist. The second thing is how do you engage those folks? How do you get the conversation started? Well, every day you're talking to customers about saving money because of these incredibly low interest rates, right? I mean, if you're doing a lot of refinance business right now, every day, day in, day out, you're in conversations on a daily basis with people who are interested in saving money and you're helping them do that. And the more value you create for that consumer by talking to them about what that savings could do for their family financially, and maybe introducing them to people who can help them use that savings wisely, i.e. the financial planner, the CPA, the, uh, you know, the insurance agent, the, the banker who can help them open uh, you know, a CD or structured savings plan account, you create opportunities. So the next thing then is we've got to figure out how to get that conversation started. We've got to begin to ask for referrals or we've got to begin to introduce and how to educate and spread this word about how great of an opportunity exists in the current market right now. So the first question we often ask is, is I'm going to ask you all a quick question. I want you to be ready to answer the question. I know this is going to seem silly, but go ahead and give me a verbal answer, okay? I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to be prepared to answer question is this. Do you know the name of your best friend? Now, obviously, you all are on mute, so I didn't hear your responses. Uh, but hopefully, you all said yes, because if you don't know the name of your best friend, well, I'm, I don't know how to help you with that one. Anyway, um, it, it, but the whole point I'm trying to illustrate is, is, you know, if I wanted to know the name of your best friend, did I ask the right question? The obvious answer is no, of course. Um, the funny thing about that is the human brain is, is, is designed to respond in very specific ways to very specific inputs, and, and, and the human brain is a lot like a computer in that uh, effect. It, it does what it's told to do, nothing more, nothing less. So when we ask our customers, do you know anybody who might be interested in buying a home, their likely most natural response is going to be no. Do you all agree? I mean, obviously, yes. I mean, you know, the fact of the matter is the, the, the first defense is going to be just what's the easiest path, right? The second key element of that is, um, you know, it, but if we change the question a little bit, for example, if I asked you, who is your best friend or what is the name of your best friend, what are you going to tell me? You're going to give me their name, right? Bill, Bob, Sue, Mary. So instead of asking do you know who'd like to save money on their current home, or do you know who might be in a position to upgrade? What if we start asking questions a little bit differently? If we start asking, you know, who do you know who might be able to benefit from the current market home buying opportunity? For example, the family that's been living in an apartment for a couple of years and they have a stable income. Maybe they've begun to outgrow that apartment. Who do you know that's changed jobs over the last five years because of the recession and all, and now they've got a really ugly commute? Maybe it's time for that family to look into relocating, reduce gas costs, transportation, commute, and all that. Who do you know that because of you know change in, in family size or demographics, probably should have upgraded their home already, but haven't. It's obvious that family is no, the home they're in is no longer meeting the needs of that family. See, 
one of the ways that we approach this conversation is, is, and I'm not a big fan of asking for referrals. I'm a big fan of earning referrals by giving value first. And, and one of the things that we want to do is we want to encourage our clients to understand the benefits and the people out there who are likely totally unaware of the benefits of buying a home in the current market environment. So all we're asking our clients to do is help us share that message. So the conversation could go something like this. You know, we're at the end of a uh, loan application or consultation appointment. We've gotten the bar. We're started with a refinance. We're saving them a couple hundred bucks a month. So what do we talk to them about? You know, Mr. Customer, at the end of the day, there's a great opportunity in the market. And it's not just existing homeowners saving money by refinancing their current mortgages. In fact, the bigger opportunity for a lot of families is the opportunity to buy a home and how affordable homes are today versus five years ago. So we're really doing everything we can to spread the word and get that message out there and educate families on how they could benefit from these incredibly low interest rates and good deals that can be had on property in today's market. So I'd really like to enlist your help, or as you probably realize, I'm pretty passionate about some of the concepts that I've shared with you here in the last hour or so, and, and I'd really like to enlist your help in spreading the word. Let me ask you something. Who do you know that you know, has a stable job in the same, but has been living in the same apartment or, or rental home for a couple of years? Maybe he would benefit from looking a little deeper into either buying the existing home or, or buying a nicer home for him, him and his family. So if I ask a question like that, they're likely going to start using their mental Rolodex and they're going to start thinking it through. From there, it's an easy follow-up question. Okay, great. Um, you know, so, so what's the best way to reach Bill? Or would you prefer to, to make the first approach? Tell him that I'd just like to spend a few minutes with him, share some ideas and thoughts about what could benefit. If there is no opportunity, then, then I'm not going to pursue it or, you know, or anything like that. My, my goal here is not to... Uh, be overly solicitous or to push people into something that's not right for them. My goal is just to simply make sure they're aware of the opportunity and then be able to make an informed decision about whether now is the right time or not. It's an educational initiative, if you will. Okay, great. <clears throat> so as I have that conversation, I go through a, you know, a short three to five minute dialogue with customers about who they know and who they're already connected to there's one other opportunity we can do, which is we can start to begin to set the stage. So as that, that short little three to five minute conversation maybe runs out of steam, I've collected you know, maybe three to five names of folks who might be interested in looking at doing something different with their housing because it appears that they, at least on the surface, might have an opportunity to benefit. Then what do I talk to the customer about? Well, then we can talk to them a little bit about what I call the yellow Honda effect. Okay. The reason I call it the yellow Honda effect is because when I originally realized this concept, uh, although later somebody told me what the brain psychology of it was, is I had a friend in college named Brian, and Brian was totally fixated on this idea of buying one of these little yellow sports cars that you see. Uh, in fact, it got so annoying that, that nobody wanted to go anywhere with Brian anymore because it, you, know, it, it, you couldn't go anywhere you know, more than a five, ten minute car ride without Brian pointing one of these suckers out. Now, I'm sure you've all experienced something like that, right? The car you really want or the car you just bought all of a sudden becomes the only car you see on the road. Everything else more or less disappears. The reason for that is there's a, there's a specific part of our brain that's designed to do, among many things, filter information. It's designed to bring to our attention what we're already thinking about. So as I'm talking with a customer, as I'm talking to you know, that, that refinance client, we've already gone through the who questions. We've already talked about our mission and our in educational initiative to spread the word about this amazing home buying opportunity. Now we're just going to say, you know, here's the, the funny thing about how our brains work, Mr. Customer. As you go through the next couple of weeks here, when we're looking on your loan specifically, all of a sudden you're going to feel like you're eavesdropping all the time because all of a sudden you're going to start recognizing or overhearing conversations all around you of people that are talking about this exact issue, saving money on a mortgage, looking to get into buying their first home, upgrading their current property. You're going to start noticing real estate signs in the yard that you never knew were there. They've probably been there for months in your neighborhood. You know, your neighbor who's listing his current home to, for sale. Obviously, there's something wrong with the house that doesn't fit that family's needs any longer. Every one of those is a potential referral opportunity. 
Okay? Every one of those is a customer who has a need that we can solve and that we can work with and we can educate them on. Now, there's another way you can do this. One of our other coaches, Derek Eggerberg, uses a, a, a prescribed letter that reminds the customer about our desire to help spread the word and encourages them to when they come across, he uses the red Volkswagen, I use the yellow Honda, same concept, right? It introduces them and reminds them that we want to help spread the word, we want to help serve the needs of those folks and provide them the same quality and caliber of service that, that our existing customers are experiencing, that your existing customers are experiencing. Another way we can do this is we can start setting expectations and we can be proactive as refinance volume begins to slow down and as you start wondering how to find additional opportunities and needs and leads, think about what financial planners have been doing for years. Now, I was working on an article about referrals probably six, seven, eight years ago and it was later at night and there was a cable news show on uh, and, and, and in the span of that one cable news show, there were three or four different commercials that came on all talking about offering some sort of a free review. Okay? In fact, one of them was even specifically advertising 401k rollovers. And at the end of the commercial, the, you know, and this is the number one news show on the number one cable news network, and in the middle of that show, this major national company is advertising. I know they've spent several hundred thousand dollars on this ad, and they're closing that commercial with, call us for a free 401k rollover review today. Okay? The advantage to the customer is there's no strings attached, there's no cost or obligation. It's just a simple, easy way to identify if there's a need or an opportunity there. So what if we tap into that? By the way, customers perceive it as something valuable. Home opportunity evaluation or home opportunity review, for example, is something that a customer likely will be attracted to. Geez, I don't know if there is a home opportunity for me or not, but I better check it out. And hey, there's no strings attached. It's free, right? So one of the things we can do proactively and strategically is we can pick up the phone and make it ring. We can start calling our past customers and talk to them about this home opportunity review, whether that is saving them money on their existing mortgage or helping them get out of their current home and into a home that's going to be a better fit for their, for their family and their needs. Second thing that we can do is, especially if we're talking to you know, real estate agents, and let's pick on realtors for just a second here. What if we introduced a very similar concept to our agents? You, if you've talked to an agent in the last couple of weeks, what have they likely told you? Oh, the market seems to be slowing down a little bit. You know, we're still okay. We had a great summer, but it's a little bit slower now. Well, what if that agent's an agent who's been in the business 10 or 15 years and they've closed 10, 20, 30 deals a year for 15, 20 years? They have hundreds of customers, the families that they've helped put in homes. How hard is it for them to reach out to those families and basically offer them a, you know, a home upgrade review or a home opportunity review? And it can even be a very soft touch. You know, hey, Mr. Customer, I just wanted to connect with you, see how things are going. If your home is continuing to meet you and your family's needs, uh, and, and talk to you a little bit about some of the opportunities that exist in the market. Do you have a few minutes to chat? Great. So these are some things that you can share with not even yourselves, but these are talking points that you can use when having conversations with the agents that you want to create deeper relationships and be more valuable to. You know, one of the things you have to remember about relationships with realtors is, is they need us for transactional stuff. I mean, you know, if we screw up a loan, they don't get a paycheck is what it basically comes down to. They refer us a deal. They're risking their paycheck on us. So they've got to be pretty confident in our transactional ability. But beyond that, I mean, that's just the basic job requirements, though. If we really want to win a referral relationship or partnership with an agent that's a, that's a successful professional agent, we've got to be a lot more than just able to get their deals done. We've got to become a business development partner with them and helping them when lead volumes are soft. 
giving them referrals, talking to them about how our referral mining system generates new opportunities to help new families and how that feeds back into helping that agent grow their business. And when times are slow and we're crazy busy, they can be a great asset to us in that respect. We can help talk to them about activities they could put in place. You know, if they just called, say, five, let's just say they called one or two past customers a week. You know, that's, that's ten, you know, you know, one to two. That's five to ten calls a week. What's the likelihood if that agent got disciplined and made one to two calls a week, ten, you know, one to two calls a day, ten calls a week, they wouldn't likely bump across one or two families that the home they're in no longer meets their needs. And maybe that family is completely unaware of the fact that with 3.5% to 4% money right now, they could upgrade their home substantially with little or no increase in cost. So some of the talking points you're seeing on the screen and some of the stuff you've heard me demonstrate, and I'm going to encourage you to, as we, as we move into the Q&A section of this webinar, um, I want to you know, encourage you to, to think about and review how all this moves forward. Uh, by the way, this is what I just put on the screen is a sample of a home opportunity questionnaire uh, that, that I use, and you'll notice it's co-branded with one of my agents. That, By the way, for those of you who uh, are just signed on to the call or maybe missed the introduction, I originated for uh, you know, four and a half years in the late 90s and early 2000s. I got back into originating again late 2010. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is because I, I didn't want to be the guy, uh, you know, who was disconnected from what my clients were dealing with on a regular basis. Um, I needed to feel like I, I wanted to get back in the game again so I understood what my clients were going through on a regular basis again. Um, anyway, but one of my existing referral partners, this is, a, you know, a, a, a thing that we put together and asked a lot of important questions about what's going on in the market those kind of things. But uh, these are all tools and resources that you guys are going to get access to immediately after today's webinar. Uh, there will be an email going out later today, if not early tomorrow, uh, with not only a copy of the link to be able to watch the video from today's program, as well as uh, links and all of the tools that you've heard me share up to this point. But at this point, just think about the concept, though. Every customer we work with helps us connect with other people who have similar needs. Each, you know, that, those, the, let's say we only connect with two. Each of those two refer us to four more. Four turns into eight. Eight turns into 16. 16 goes into 32 and so on and so forth and it just snowballs. Imagine what your business would look like six months from now if you kicked this off starting this week. You know, the next thing you'd be asking me is how do I build a massive team very quickly. So at this point, I'm going to do a couple of quick things. Um, if you'll just give me a quick second, I'm going to open up the chat window again um, for everybody. And, and then I'm also going to unmute the phone lines if you give me just a second here. Um, uh, I hope I didn't just make the mistake that I think I just thought I did. Um, nope, nope, that's not the one I wanted. So mm, chat for all. Um, to make this a little simpler, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and open up the mics. There's two things I want you guys to be aware of. One is remember the background noise can be a challenge on these types of webinars. So if you are in an environment that's noisy, um, I want you to go ahead and get ready to uh, go ahead and maybe put your phone on mute. Um, from your end, if you hit star six on your phone line, you'll be able to mute yourself. Um, or if you have a mute button on your smartphone, you might want to go ahead and flip to that at this point. Um, secondly is I'm going to um, I'm going to request that you go ahead and post your questions in the chat box as we move through the, the additional parts of this conversation. I'm going to ask that you go ahead and put those uh, questions in the chat box, and then that way we can kind of address them in an orderly fashion so we don't have 18 people talking at once kind of thing. Uh, but at this point, uh, the, the phone line should be open, and the chat box is live. So, uh, Earl, if you're still with me. Um, yep, I'm still here. Okay, I'm going to say let's go ahead and start taking some questions and addressing some hands-on. 
Uh, this is the live coaching portion of the web uh, program of the webinar, and you're welcome to uh, you know shout out your questions. Go ahead and give me a quick shot in the chat window. Let me know what it is you'd like to uh, get some specific guidance on. Okay, looks like we got a question from Beverly. Did you state that there are samples of the letters shown on the seminar that are available to us? Uh, yes, Beverly, absolutely. Um, we, we've got our, our marketing team set up to be able to, to um, we've, we've already pre prepared a template. Now, the, the one piece of it that, that um, might have a little bit of a delay on is, is that we want to be able to get the link, uh, the video for today's program up on the website where you'll be able to download it and view it um, you know, indefinitely. Um, and we're going to build that into the, web, the email that's going to go out with all these tools attached. There's no additional registration required or anything like that. I'll go over towards the end of the call exactly what those tips are and how you can use them a little bit better. But yeah, you'll be getting access to a lot of the talking points and reminders of how to actually execute some of the ideas and strategies that I've shared with you today. Okay. And Walt, um, to answer your question, by attending, are we automatically registered for the other weeks? That would be a no. Um, you will be uh, getting a, an email, and or you can go to the site, um, www.mxlcoach.com slash webinars, and you can sign up there for the other weeks as well. Part of the reason for that, just, to, just so you know, Walt, is that with the way the system is set up, each of the, each week's topic is very specific, um, and and we're trying to be as you know to not overwhelm or overload you with content that's not relevant to you. We've got a unique registration process set up for each event, so that only the attendees who register or attend that event um, will get the tools and resources. Because otherwise, it can just get complete completely overwhelming and overloading, and then it becomes more of a frustration than a benefit. Um, so to, to try and limit some of that, um, we are setting each event up as a unique uh, opportunity. Great. Looks like somebody popped something in on the private chat line here. Is it something you can share? <laughs> well, I was getting over to where I can read it. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, trying to make sense of their question here. Um, you do a question? Okay. Um, well, Bill asked the question uh, about the, the home upgrade opportunity review questionnaire, and, and I just realized that I did not include that um, in the, the set of tools that was going to be uh, uh, uploaded. But if you are interested in getting a sample of that questionnaire and the template and how this all works, um, I, you know, shoot me an email directly, or um, you know, the info at amexcellcoach.com works. Or if you want to let uh, if you'd like a personal copy of it, I think I'll have your email address from your registration. I can get that to you, Bill. Um, anybody else? I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and make this uh, homage. Uh, you know, this being our first in the weeks, the first of these weekly webinar series. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of back-end planning and, and preparation work that went into this program, and so, uh, so we're trying to do our best to make sure we got all our bases covered. But every once in a while, we overlook something. So I'll ask for a little bit of grace on that, if that's all right. Uh, but if anybody else would like a copy of that sample uh, questionnaire, you know, just shoot me an email and I'll, I'll uh, get it set up and sent out to you for that. All right. Other questions, um, other things that you'd like to know about specific strategies, how to implement them, how to balance what you're doing. Um, again, going back to this whole concept of how do we begin to crank up that purchase referral generation engine in the midst of what we're doing with these refinances so that we don't wake up one day surprised by an empty pipeline and take 60 to 90 days without a paycheck to rebuild it.
All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say, Earl, let's move on and just uh, share a couple of the last bits and pieces of, of putting a nice wrap on today's program and helping you walk out of here with with executables that, that you can start using immediately this, I mean, literally this afternoon in your business. I'm sorry. I think somebody started to voice a question there for just a second. I think oh, I heard okay. that. Uh, Jeremy, we'll Okay, don't, and don't go uh, yet, Jeremy. Jeremy. We've got some really cool stuff uh, that uh, Eric's going to go over as far as what you're going to receive in your email. So hang out just a little bit longer, Jeremy. Go ahead, Eric. And Jeremy also asked for my email address, um, so I'm just typing it in here right quick uh, into the chat so you guys can even cut and paste it from there. Uh, MXLcoach.com. Okay. All right. So, guys, just as a, as a thank you for joining us today, um, and, and hopefully we'll see you back on future webinars, you know, plug in, keep an eye on the website, watch for upcoming announcements of new programs. There's some things that we're going to be sending out to you, and I mentioned earlier, uh, in, especially in response to um, Beverly's question, yes, we will be sending the emails, the tools, the talking points of the scripts that you've heard me share with you on today's webinar. Those are going to be emailed out to you um, along with, you know, part of the reason we ask you to register with a little bit more information that you might normally put in on these webinars is we want to be able to know how to get this information to you efficiently. So I just wanted to spend a couple of quick seconds to go through what tools you're going to get. The first one is, is a tool uh, titled Tips for Leveraging Referrals. It's a reminder of some of the key talking points that I've shared with you today. Uh, it's sort of a quick reference sheet that you can use to, to get to um, you know, a higher volume of activity and get, and get this stuff moving in your business, reminding you to uh, use these tools uh, throughout your day, week, or month. The second is the getting referral scripts. Um, some of the, the conversation scripts that you saw in the, bu the bullet pointed scripts that you saw uh, earlier in the PowerPoint are in a Word document or in a PDF format that you're going to be able to take those and make them your own. Um, I encourage you to practice with them and work with them a little bit. Don't try and memorize them word for word like lines to a Shakespeare play. Play with them, make bullet points out of them, and practice them as a conversational outline so you can stay in dialogue with your clients. Uh, the, the third one is going to be the Who Questions Worksheet. This is a step-by-step -step guide that's going to help you come up with your version of those Who Questions you heard me share um, and, and help customize them for yourself. You can also turn around and share that tool, go through that exercise with a, a group of referral partners, whether you do like a breakfast club mastermind program or a lunch and learn or, or individually meeting one-on-one -on -one with agents that you want to develop or have a an existing relationship with, but you want to take it to the next level where you're working to become a business development partner with those agents, those financial planners, those CPAs. Share this few questions worksheet with them, and that will be able to, uh, you know, you, the two of you can work together to create uh, an increasing volume of people finding and identifying people that you can help and benefit. Home Opportunity Review Call Script is really uh, you and your referral partners can use uh, to, to uh, It'll maximize uh, your ability to capture and generate leads um, and to reconnect with clients that you maybe have lost touch with over the years. Um, similar to the Agents Take Advantage of Rates HOE outline, uh, H Home Opportunity Evaluation, Home Opportunity Review, they are one and the same. Uh, you use what title or labeling makes the most sense for you and your business and your practice, what's most comfortable for you. Uh, but this is a tool that you can give the agents that you want to approach as, a, as sort of a gift of knowledge tool that can create some synergy and, and gives you a conversation starting point with somebody that you'd like to develop a deeper, more committed referral partnership with. Um, another tool that you'll be provided is partner lead referral scripts. It talks about how to hand off leads from back and forth and not, uh, you know, as they say, drop the baton and get slowed down by lost opportunities. I, mean, I, I know you all probably had that experience where you know you get a phone call from an agent and they say, you know, so what's going on with Mr. Smith? And you're going, what Mr. Smith? I don't remember a Mr. Smith. Uh, likely it is that there's a dropped handoff because the agent gave your card to Mr. Smith and Mr. Smith never called you, right? So this is a, a, pra a practice and strategy that you can use to endorse or edify each other and make sure there's a smooth, clean handoff. 
And finally, you'll get a link to be able to watch the replay of this video, to download it to your hard drive, share it with your team, use it and abuse it, come back to it and practice the tactics that you've heard me share with you today over and over again until they're operational in your business. So those are the gifts that you'll get shortly after the webinar. All right. Well, that was fantastic, Eric. I really appreciate you taking the time today um, to go over some of these uh, things with us. And, and I hope that you all uh, enjoyed this and, uh, and found some value in it. We want to thank you for attending. Um, you will be getting those tools in, uh, in an email if you're just for attending the webinar. Um, but I'd also like to invite you, um, if you would like a, some more direct, some more individualized guidance on how to use these tools or, or um, if you'd just like to take a deeper dive into your business and find out a, maybe there's a strategy that you'd like to develop, a specific, something very specific, um, we do offer a no-cost, no-obligation strategy session where you'll spend an hour with one of our coaches. Uh, Bill, this would be a great time to go over that letter campaign for you. Um, but there's uh, about three ways you can get in touch with us. You can either log on to the website um, under mxlcoach.com slash strategy. You can email us at info, or you can give us a phone call. Um, and uh, if you will put in extension 102, that's 888-819-7047, extension 102, uh, that will take you to, um, to someone who can set that strategy session up for you. Um, and like I said, it's no cost, no obligation. We would love to help you work. Um, there's a lot of people that don't understand really what the value of coaching may do in their business. This will give you a chance to kind of try that out and, uh, and see if it's something that you'd like to, uh, to look into further. But again, thank you so much for your time, Eric, and any last words? Well, the one last thing I guess I'd say to all of you um, is do something with the information you've been given today. And, and the easiest way to do that is just a quick uh, drill down exercise. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job as a coach if I didn't give you an action plan to leave the event with. So the first question you want to ask yourself is, what's the most valuable thing you've heard in this program? Pick one first. You can, you can always come back to the replay later and pick up the tools and go deeper on the other stuff. But pick the one strategy that you feel is going to be most beneficial to your business right now. Okay, decide what that is. The second question is, what actions do you need to take? Maybe it's the use of the Who Question script, for example. So you need to go through that Who Questions worksheet. That's step one. Step two, you need to, to grab a buddy and role play it, uh, you know, just to get a comfortable feel for how to manage that conversation. And then three, you want to start using it in your next loan application appointment or consultation. So those are the, the next three steps you need to put. Make a commitment to what actions you need to take to take that one idea and put it in action in your business. And then third is put a deadline on it. We all respond better in it. And it, it I mean, you know, it, it, you know, think about the concept of, you know, oh, yeah, I'll quit, you know, I'll quit doing that tomorrow, right? It never happens, right? Tomorrow becomes next week, becomes next month, becomes next year, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the best things you can do is once you've decided what you want to implement, how you're going to implement it, set a specific target date or deadline for it. By when will you have that action item implemented? Tools like said will be on the way. Watch for the email coming out later today. But take some initiative and make a commitment and a promise to yourself about what you're going to do as a result of the information you've heard today and how it's going to impact your business so that it actually creates results for you. I guess the last thing I wanted to share with you is one last time. Again, thank you for joining us for today, the, the inaugural program of our weekly webinar series, Maximum Performance Webinar. Um, uh, next week's program is going to be focusing on some of the time management hyper-reactivity, overwhelm, and task saturation issues that this kind of a market can put us in. So be sure to jump back to the, web, uh, the website, mxlcoach.com slash webinars. Check out upcoming programs next week and, and subsequent weeks later. And we look forward to seeing you on future programs of the event. At this point, um, you know, my team and I will be hanging, well, Eric, uh, Earl and I will be hanging for a few more seconds here if there's any specific questions or guidance that you'd like to ask us about. Otherwise, again, thank you for joining us. We hope you found today valuable. If there's anything, uh, coincidentally, by the way, that you'd like to hear about on future programs, certainly shoot us an email and let us know, or uh, feel free to post something here in the chat. Otherwise, thanks again for joining us, and make it a great week. Thanks, guys.